Hello, this is Jonathan with Robotics, and today I'll be showing you how to replace the gears in your X-Series Dynamixel actuator. If you've had a Dynamixel for a while, you may have noticed a few changes as your actuator sees more use, including louder operation, increased backlash, or grinding or crunching noises. These are all indicators that the gears in your Dynamixel are due for a change. All mechanical systems suffer wear and tear eventually, and Dynamixel actuators are no exception. Dynamixel gear replacement is a simple process, and doing so when yours wear out is a great way to bring new life to an old actuator. Before we get started on the gear replacement, we should make sure that we have everything that we need, namely, replacement gears. Replacement gear sets for all Dynamixel actuators can be purchased directly from Robotics. Grease or lubricant. This should be included in any replacement gear sets purchased from Robotics. An M2.5 hex driver an additional M3 hex driver, a small Phillips head screwdriver, and if we're working on a 430 size servo, small horn screws like those included in the package when you first purchased your servo. Now that we have everything we need, we can get started on replacing the gears in our Dynamixel actuator. The one that I'll be working on today is an XH540, but the process is the same for all 540 and 430 size servos. The first step to disassembling our actuator is to remove the output horn. Start by inserting two bolts into threaded holes on opposite sides of the horn. If you're using a 540 size servo like me, you can use two of the corner bolts holding the servo casing together. If you have a 430 size servo, you'll need to use the small horn screws that came included with the horn. Then, using your M3 driver, remove the bolt in the center of the horn using the bolts you attached earlier in order to prevent the horn from rotating as you turn the bolt. Now, tighten the two bolts on either side of the horn in order to raise the horn away from the body of the servo. Be sure to alternate between which side you're tightening in order to lift the horn off the output shaft as evenly as possible. Once the horn has been removed, there should be a thrust washer set into a small recessed ring around the output shaft. Remove the washer and set it and the horn aside for later. Now, we can start removing the front casing. To remove the front casing, unscrew the four M2.5 bolts securing the corner of the casing. After those have been removed, unscrew the small black Phillips head screw near the bottom of the servo. Next, place the actuator flat on its back, press down on the output shaft lightly with one of your fingers, and lift the casing with your other hand in order to remove it and expose the internal gears. With the gears exposed, you can now remove them from the actuator. Start by removing the topmost gear, near the middle of the actuator, then the two beneath it. Now you can remove the output shaft. That slight resistance you feel is the magnetic encoder pulling on the magnetized shaft. Now that the old gears have been removed, we have access to the bearings that sit on either side of the output shaft. If you wish to replace the bearings, you can remove and replace them now. Next we install our replacement gears. As you place the new gears inside your actuator, be sure to apply the included lubricant to the teeth on each gear. Failing to apply enough lubricant to the replacement gears may drastically shorten their lifespan. First, place the final output shaft in its position on the bearing over the magnetic encoder. You should feel the magnets pulling it back into place. Then, attach the input gear to the output shaft of the motor. Next, place the gear nearest to the output shaft, with the inner teeth facing downwards. As you're placing the gears, you may need to rotate them slightly to allow the teeth to mesh properly before they can be fully seated. Finally, insert the topmost gear in the same orientation as the previous one. Once all the gears have been placed and lubricated, turn the output shaft to verify that all the gears are meshing correctly.
After checking all the gears have properly meshed, replace the casing and reinsert all the fasteners removed during disassembly. If you're using a 540 size servo, I recommend leaving one of the bolts attached to the horn to help with calibration later on. When the casing has been reassembled, place the thrush washer back onto the casing in the recess around the output shaft. Then, line up the small dot on the horn with the small dot on the output shaft and gently press down. The final step is to reattach the horn bolt and fasten it. Now that our actuator has been reassembled, it's vital that we calibrate the position sensor in our servo in order to avoid any dangerous situation resulting from improper positioning. Let's head over to Dynamixel Wizard to perform the calibration. To begin calibration, open the Tools drop-down from the menu and select Calibration. A pop-up window containing some warnings will open. After reading and accepting the warnings, click Next to continue. Cycle the power on your Dynamixel so that the wizard can begin calibration. Once you've arrived at this screen, rotate your horn to match the position of the small dot using the screw still attached to the horn for leverage. The first position should be due south, then east, now north, and finally west. Afterwards, I recommend performing a few test motions before you close the Dynamixel Wizard. That's the whole process of replacing the gears inside your Dynamixel X Series servo. If you'd like some more Dynamixel tips and tricks or maintenance information, check out the official Robotus e-manual or feel free to say hello on our official Robotus community forum. This has been Jonathan with Robotus, and I look forward to building more with you soon.